The use of social media as an agent of social change is a widely debated topic in our society. Age seems to be one of the leading factors that divides those for and against. Globally, young people have learnt to utilise the affordances of social media platforms to build, strengthen and sustain their grassroots movements. One study shows that youth are driven to social activism by three factors, social identity, desire to be heard and increased online activism. In this video presentation, I aim to analyse the ways social media and its affordances have allowed them to do this, and I argue social media is a vital tool in amplifying youth voices and generating social change. Before I analyse the use of social media in Hong Kong's youth activism, I will firstly provide some background on Hong Kong's political context. For 156 years, Hong Kong was a British colony, during which time its residents benefited from unique political liberties not available in Imperial China, such as freedom of the press, assembly and speech. On July 1st, 1997, Britain's lease on Hong Kong ended and it was handed back to the Chinese under the Sino-British Joint Agreement, which outlined the sovereignty of Hong Kong for the first 50 years after the end of the lease. A mere six years later, China attempted to implement Article 23, a law that criminalised speaking out against its totalitarian rule. In a show of defiance, 500,000 Hong Kongers took part in the anti-Article 23 protest on July 1, 2003. It was successful in postponing the article indefinitely, and it essentially sparked the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong, commonly referred to as the July 1st effect. Prior to the anti-Article 23 protest, Hong Kong's youth were considered politically apathetic. However, a 2008 study found that many 2003 youth protesters reported feeling politically empowered after the event. In 2012, China implemented moral and national education that was essentially designed to instill Chinese nationalism and loyalty in Hong Kong's youth. A grassroots pro-democracy student activist group called Scholarism was established in 2012 by 14-year-old Joshua Wong to protect Hong Kong's educational system from Chinese influence. I will now move into discussing my chosen case study. Two years later, students would rise again to protest Beijing's decision to only allow Hong Kong residents to elect their chief executive from a list of pre-selected candidates. It was widely considered a gesture of fake democracy and sparked the 79-day umbrella protest. Activists' use of umbrellas to block police pepper spray served as the inspiration for the name. Youth activists made up 53% of the protesters and generated masses of support through the use of social media. The Hong Kong Federation of Student and Scholarism were the first to protest outside government headquarters. A 2018 study explains through structural emancipation, idea expression and resource diversification, social media allows civilians to draw attention to social issues that they feel those in power have neglected. Additionally, due to the variety of engagement options it affords them, social media gives people an alternative and extra institutional way to engage in social movements, liberating them from pre-existing constraints such as distance. In saying this, both student organisations realised they would need to utilise social media to grow support for their cause. Scholarism began a Facebook page and used its affordances as a way to share information about protests and events. Previously, Joshua Wong had gathered support manually, going out into the community and handing out flyers. The introduction of the Facebook page eliminated this need and affordances such as network informed associations and reposting allowed the page to grow significantly. While the page is no longer active, it still has 288,000 followers. FireChat was the next extremely successful social media application utilised by youth protesters. FireChat allows users to send messages with Bluetooth rather than having to rely on an internet connection. During the protest, cell services and internet providers were often blocked, however this affordance provided a loophole to the issue. It allowed protesters to communicate during the rally and provide information on safe zones or areas with a heavy police presence to avoid. After Wong urged his movement to use it via Facebook, FireChat received more than 100,000 new users in under 24 hours. In conclusion, it is evident social media is a powerful tool for amplifying youth voices and sustaining and strengthening their grassroots movements. In saying this, activism does not necessarily occur completely online. In the current day and age, it is more of an extension of the work they do on the ground. In Hong Kong's case, social media was utilised to maintain momentum and inform citizens while the protests occurred in the streets away from social media. However, it is also important to recognise many of the rallies happening in the street were filmed and posted to social media. This form of citizen journalism, often conducted by young people on the front lines, brought in more supporters and inspired others, particularly youth, to join the fight. 
instances of police brutality gained national attention once posted and assisted in holding those accountable for their actions. Social media can be seen as a vessel or tool for youth activism, and while it's widely criticised, the power of social media as an agent of social change and youth empowerment cannot be understated.